Yes, it does, and you want to kill yourself. <laughs> because in your head, it sounded much better than what you manufactured that's coming out your mouth, right? Mm -hmm. So, if you have a problem with, uh, let's say, a mathematical problem, it was very primary, uh, like uh, what's four times eight or something, mm -hmm. you're bouncing. You wouldn't go back to your math teacher and tell her about this problem you were having with multiplication, would you? Because your math teacher did a good job. In other words, you don't have to go back and ask someone how to do that. Now that's a, di a slightly different but very similar. Because if I do a good enough job, you're going to be well aware of all the concepts that you need in order to do a good job with what you're doing. Right? Yes. Um, the difference between singing and anything else in the world is magnificent. Because this is the only thing that you have no contact with the action. In other words, a guitar, some of you play guitar, uh, the teacher can say, no, you're fingering that improperly. Do this. Because the teacher can see what fingers you're using. The piano teacher can say, no, not one, two, three, four. One, two, three, thumb under. Both you, both the student and the teacher can see there's an error. With dance, the, and you're doing the kick, and it goes like this, and she says, no, point your toe, not at the ceiling, darling. Straight ahead. Now straighten your knee out and turn it out. You can look in the mirror and say, oh, God, no, that did look pretty strange. You can see the problem, what's wrong with it. If it's tennis, these are all exterior things, external things. But with the singer, everything you do is hidden from you as far as the parts that are working, right? You can't see your vocal cords. You can't see your lungs. You really have trouble seeing your tongue, right? So as a consequence, everything you do is a mental concept. You have to have a mental picture of what you're attempting to do. And as you know, if these things are done correctly, you're getting results with your voices, aren't you? Good things are happening. They should be. But because we really aren't firm, as you will see in a moment, on all of the things that you were told and that were discussed in the learning of these things, they get a little lost on the way. And so I have found we need to do some discussing about concept so that when you're in Keokuk, you don't call me, which I had happen, the little girl's coming in next week from, um, you know, I don't know what to mean. Oh, good grief. <laughs> oh, she's losing it. Um, she's from, from Texas, from, um, oh, God, ridiculous. You know her. Beautiful girl. She and her sister worked together, and they just recorded oodles of stuff in Nashville. It's going very hot in the yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, you know, You know what I'm talking about. Oh, she's so darling. Anyway, no, no, no. Uh, Roberta Morales from Dallas. <laughs> Roberta Morales is coming in at five next week for this very same kind of thing to pull that back together because she says, We've been in the studio so much and on tour so much, things are slipping. I need some help. Things are not going smoothly. And what she's going to get is exactly what you're getting. She'll be here for three days. Taking three hours, you know, one each day, because that's all you can stand when you're taking privately. And, and then she's, and that's even tough. An hour of private, half hour is usually all you can manage, and you don't get that much done. That's why this is so great, because somebody else can be up here making mistakes. You see the corrections, you go to school on it, you swear you won't do that, but you come up and do the same thing. And then it takes you a week to, oh, I see what I'm doing wrong. So this is what, this is why I have decided you must have a good understanding of all of the, these concepts so that when you're in Keokuk 
and something goes wrong, you can pull out your notebook and say, now what am I, what is wrong with the way I'm doing this? Why isn't it flowing as it should? Okay? Now we're only going to talk about the first three exercises tonight. Number one, he down. Write that. Write he down. Now I want you to tell me everything you know about he down. Placement, written. What? Pardon me? Written or verbal. Verbal, right now. Okay. What do you mean by placement? Um, the placement of the air. Which results in what? The vibrations. Uh huh. What about that? What do you think to do that? To keep it. Um, you think blow the air into the gums? Right. You think blow the air into the no. gums, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's one thing. Write that down. And right after it, to achieve a vibration. Now, let's say you blew the air into the gums and you said a nice he, but it really didn't give you a buzz. How would you get that vibration? What would you use to secure the vibration? A lot of air. Well, a lot of air, yes. We need a bunch of air to blow in there, right? But I've given you little crutches. Smile. Yes. You would use an L. All of you sit up straight, take a good breath, and and think, I'm going to blow this air right into my gums, but I'm going to think, I'm going to say, lead me. Go. Lead me. Get a good buzz? You see, what happened? Say, Lee. Lee. What did the tongue do? The tip went right. What did the back do? It went, it went right up against those forward. upper back molars. <clears throat> so you write that down. You write tip of the tongue behind the front teeth. Lower front teeth, right? And against the upper back molars. And, and if you have any difficulty with he, use an L. And for a couple of days, on the first he down, or the first he a a o u, use the L, li, to secure or re-secure that position. We get very, uh, very um, secure about the he, and we just do it, you see, instead of thinking, what am I after? I'm after that vibration. How do I get that? I've got to blow the air into the gums because the air carries the vibration of the vocal cords, right? You're not after a sound. Who would want the sound you get on an E? That's enough to break leases. You know, be asked to move from your apartment by the neighbors on both sides. That's pretty ugly stuff, isn't it? Yes, so why would you want to listen? That's self-abuse. <laughs> Get a whip, whip yourself, but don't, don't charm yourself by listening to that E. Now, what else do you have to remember? Smile. Oh, not smile. Oh, oh gotcha, gotcha. Smile. Everyone say it. Smile. Yes. And if you have a problem, I hope you've written down. Use. Lee, because that forces the back of the tongue up against the molars, right? Mm -hmm. And the tip behind the teeth. Now, remember also, you're not going to brace that tongue. At all times, the tongue should feel like a piece of uncooked liver. Is that ugly? Mm -hmm. Ugly, ugly. When I was a little girl, we had liver at least once a week, because it had iron. Mm -hmm. And then later they found, they discovered that the liver is what eliminates all of the poisons from your body. So having liver, you're really eating. But it was good. You know, my mother <laughs> made it super with onions and, and mountain mushrooms, you know, sauteed with a bit of wine. Oh, God, I love it. But I don't, like it then? Oh, I loved it. 
Oh, my mother was a cook. I mean, she, that was her profession. She was a homemaker. And uh, she should have been making a salary in the neighborhood of six figures. I think anyone, any homemaker, deserves that kind of salary. She did very well until the Depression. And there was a problem <laughs> with everyone. Um, however, my dad was one of the three builders and contractors and architects in the state of California that did not file bankruptcy. Mm. Yeah. He was holding 30, 36 um, second mortgages before he dealt with every one of them off. Very honorable man. Very, very, I was blessed with a great mother and a great father and a fantastic grandmother who was wiry as hell and ran the whole shebang. <laughs> <laughs> so, and they all had long lives, uh, and I'm grateful to say that. At any rate, back to it. Tip of the tongue behind the teeth, but not braced, right? The tip is not braced. It's laying there. It's like a piece of uncooked liver. It's very slimy. You've all seen it. But the back is braced up against the upper back molars, isn't it? You're directing the air that carries the vibration right into the gums. And you're going to smile like mad. Right? Like right. just a cat. That, this is tight. That's the problem. We're saying to the tongue, the tip of it, you relax. Now I want the back of you to be uptight. And I want you the smile. And you see where we're giving all kinds of different commands, aren't we? We're requiring tension in certain parts and relaxation in other parts. Yes? And that's important to remember. Now, from there, where do you go? What do you think? Now you've got the first E. You've got four notes. What are you going to do? What do you mean, come down? Slide. 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 And as you slide, you're going to keep the vibration during the slide, aren't you? Yes? Mm -hmm. And you are coming down to the top of the note. Right? Well, those are the important things, right? Mm -hmm. Tip of the tongue, back of the tongue. Smile, blow the air into the gums, which results in a good vibration. Use the L if you need it to establish the E. Push out the air up here. Well, they haven't had that second exercise yet. So we're just on the moon button, stuff like that. Well, no, we're past that. But they won't get that. See, in a couple of weeks, maybe. So, do you understand about he down now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What are you doing? I'm trying to push my tongue down. <laughs> you can't do it. Uh, no, that'll gag you every time. <laughs> we will have other things to learn about the tongue. You don't want a flat tongue. Remember that. People think, and voice coaches will say, flatten your tongue. Or if you flatten, you can't because it lays in the jaw, and the jaw is on an angle. If you flatten your tongue, you're going to be pushing part of it down the neck. And that's what gives you a little zoom. And then you gag. So the back of the tongue, even on an ah, the back of the tongue is a bit higher than the front, isn't it? Because the back doesn't open as widely. And ultimately, the thought is, it's just going to go with the jaw. That's when it gives up, pressing up against those upper back molars. Now, let me say one thing about that. I'm very adamant about that pressure of the back of the tongue against the upper back molars. However, you know that as you open the jaw, 
the tongue relaxes and goes with the jaw, doesn't it? And it just lays there and goes along to the right. When it closes, it comes back up against that upper back molar again, or the oo, right? But when you're singing, and you sing the word like, I, you are at the point now where you, you close it, I, and the tongue comes into place. Is it pressed? Hmm? No. It's not tight against the upper back teeth, is it? No. It's just, it just touches. But it would not have touched had you not taught it. This is where you go. And when you sing, lead, just sing. Lead. Where's your tongue? The tip is down, the back is up. But it's not pressed, is it? Do you see? Because you have taught it. When I sing an E and I close my jaw, that's where you better be. But it's not. You see, there's no tension there. And that's why all of these exercises you've had to work so hard for, to force the tongue to learn what you expect when the jaw is closed. Do, do you understand? Now, is that clear on the E? Yes? Yes. yes. Now let's talk about the second exercise. E, E, R, O, U. Well, the first so thing you have to think about is that E. I'll tell you something that you all did. And the smile, don't forget, right smile on that he. Mm -hmm. You know, on the on the he down. Oh, big smile. Jessica. Um, when we first started working on he, I had you speaking it and then speaking it and singing it. Mm -hmm. And um, with much pressure behind it, right? To get that air through, to get that vibration. Mm -hmm. Yes? Mm -hmm. um, now, where was I going with that? Oh, and we got to the point, it took several weeks with He Down. If you recall, I think I gave you five of the little series the first week, then I added on a couple, then I added on a couple more, right? Um, then we came to E to F. Oh boy. Everybody gave me a whole different E. Like this is a different thing, so it's a different E. Do you remember that? And there was this struggle again to reproduce that same E on the he that you had on the he down. So it was a matching set. But of course, I got a different E. It took a couple of weeks to instill that idea. Pretend you're going to do he down and give me the same he. Now, starting with the e, what do you have to think about on just the e? Everything you thought about on the he down. So that that e is the same e on he, e, a, o, u as it was on the he down. And there's very little, if you, if you put that he down in shape, there's very little chance, really, that you're going to duplicate, that you're not going to duplicate that E. Do, do you understand? If you've done good thinking about your He down, then you're going, to, you're going to stick to that. When we first started it, it was like it was a new thing, so, oh, we're going to do something different. So instead of getting He, I got He, all kind of, we're going to sing, oh boy, we're going to do the same shape. So you want the same He with the same buzz. All of the previous things you've written apply to the placement of the vibration of that E. The tongue, the smile, the whole thing, right? Now, going from E, he, to F, what is your thought? Oh, not hold the E. Hold the vibration. 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 
Yes. Hold the feeling of the E. As That you're trying to keep that vibration. Now you know that never, well, sometime down the line, quite a ways down the line, you you'll get, and I'm sure you're getting a sort of vibration on the air now. It's not like the E. It's not as intense as the E, because as the jaw opens, there's more room for the vibration to vacillate. You see, to, to spread out. So you don't have an intense vibration. That will increase over a period of time, but it will never, ever be as violent as the E itself. Do, do you see? Because it's wider and those vibrations spread out. But you're going to try like mad to keep that vibration as you sustain the feeling of the E. Don't think I'm holding E. Because if you think I'm got, I've got to hold E, the back of the tongue is going to stay up. It says, you want that E? Okay. E. Remember that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And then you finally became disturbed, and you said, E. And went, right? Yes, do you remember that? I'm sure you do. That was a horror for a long time on E to Air in, uh, when we finally did the triad with E to Air. Oh boy, remember? Mm -hmm. Because we had to change pitch on it as well as change vowel. Okay, so you've got your E. Now what do you think as you're going to your air? Number one, I've got to keep the air directed into the gums, right? And I'm going to open my jaw, keeping the vibration as I open the jaw, yes? Yes. Right behind the teeth, right? Yes. But the, not, not braised, but just behind. No, just laying there so you can feel those ridges with the tip of the tongue. The, um, every vowel, the tongue plays no part in any vowel. It just lays there like a dead piece of meat and goes along for the ride. The tongue only performs consonants. Right? And we have all kinds of consonants, as you know. Back of the tongue, tip of the tongue, center of the tongue, lips. There are only how many that are singable? Four. Four. Mm -hmm. And plus NG. L M N R. Mm. Right? Which is really a consonant because it's a tongue action. And none of the others can be sung, can they? They're all plosives. They explode. Right? Yes. Okay, so, going from E to air, your thought is I've got to keep that air coming. Now, there was a, a little trick about the third time that we worked E to air. I suggested a change in concept. Do you remember what it was? Because you were thinking, keep a straight line which you are going to continue thinking. The air and the pitch, the vibration is going to stay right behind those upper back teeth, the upper front teeth, while you're slowly opening your jaw. But I gave you something to help you. Do you remember what it was? Was it increasing the air? Ah, uh, yes. And that should still be in your consciousness as you're working E to air. Because we get to the point where we say, and particularly when we get to the fast tape. He, yeah, we just do it. Do you see? You will, even though we're going to go to the fast tape and our first high exercise very shortly, um, you will still do the slow tape twice a week for some time. Then you will do the slow tape once a week, forevermore. And I mean forevermore. Once a week and you will read your notes once a week as you do each exercise. I'm saying this because if you don't, you will. What do they do in that, in that thing? If you choose to take the, to do this thing, 
and the tape will explode afterwards. Yeah. Mission impossible. Mission Should impossible. you choose to accept this mission? Should you choose not to, you will explode. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So, the feeling of increasing, not the air, but the pressure. Why did we do that? Now, you know you cannot increase the air, don't you? Hmm? If you really increased the air, what would happen to the pitch? It would go sharp. So, by thinking of increasing the air, you counteract the tendency to back off, to avoid that crack. That once you get that he, eh, that thing, you know, there is a terror that it's going to happen, that it might happen again. And this thought of I'm going to increase the pressure counteracts the tendency to back off because that's the first thing the singer wants to do. If I back off, I can go around by way of China and avoid that glitch. Right? Anything to avoid that crack. So you counteract that by thinking I'm going to increase the pressure and you really wind up with just the same pressure. Did you write that down? Well, once you get past the E to F, see, we're very, it's very easy for us to understand E and R. The big problems, the biggest problem is understanding air. We use it all the time, but are not aware of it. Well, yes, if you're going for a higher note, you do actually increase your air. But if you're doing E, A, A, O, U, where you want to maintain that placement into the air, in order to avoid the natural instinct to back off and go around to circumvent any crack, you think increase the pressure, and that helps you keep the placement, and you don't back off. Because singers consistently want to do E, A, do you see, to get to it without... Breaking, yes. Another danger, too, is the fact that sometimes we'll back off, and we know that it cracks right there, so we'll immediately take, it'll go right into the throat, and we'll start protecting Fixing it. Yes. Fixing it. And there can be no fixing it. You cannot fix it. You fix it with, uh, with the concept, I'm going to increase that pressure, and that will keep you safe forevermore. Okay? There's another place where we use the same thing, isn't there? Going from aw to ooh. Because there again, you have the whammies, not the grammies, or the bammies. Mm. Oh. oh, I have a question. Yes. Speaking of oh, please. Did you take it? Yes, you don't want to see it. Oh, God. What did you not like about it? You mean, why don't you ask the other question? What did you like about it? I thought Celine Dion did a great job. She was not, certainly not welcomed. I thought they needed more security. They had... Oh, yeah. Oh, oh. Uh, soy bomb. Bob Dylan, <laughs> soy bomb. Yeah, the well, they shouldn't have had Bob Dylan on there. He was stoned out of his gourd. I mean, he's ret he was in the studio, you know, for a minute and a half. Okay, I have a question. Yes. Pavarotti was supposed to be there, and Aretha covered for Paparazzi. She did a fine job. She did. She did. I thought it was incredible. I really wanted to I thought see it was that incredible. Well, it was incredible that she could do it. I didn't particularly enjoy the way she did it. But I thought it was yeah, incredible that she did it. Yeah, but considering that she stepped in last minute. Yeah, and sings out of tune generally. She had some dancers behind her. Thank God. Um, <laughs> I don't know why well, everybody has fits terrible. over the Spice Girls, because they sing just as in tune as anybody else on the show. In fact, a little more. At least they looked groomed. They're cute, they're young, they're vital, they're smiling, they're happy. And as far as the rest of the show is concerned, it was, I fast forward, fast forward, two bars of the, oh God, go ahead. It was, you know, it was just ludicrous. I, I'm sick of looking at people who are dirty. I am bored to tears with it. And we have no more respect for their profession. 
and they come in there looking like they've just come from piling the manure behind the shed. Was there anybody that you really liked? I liked the Spice Girls. I thought they were cute, alive, vital. They were groomed, well choreographed. And of course, everybody says, I don't like things that are so well rehearsed. Oh, you want to see somebody in the raw? Fine. Then look at the bomb, you know. It was, it was. And where was security? Yeah, where was security? Yeah, was Why did they when need the soy bomb guy came out? They didn't have a plan. Shows up as a security one. So they won't be hired next year. Because this guy came out. Well, you know what he was from? He was from one of, he was just Will someone tell us what happened? With, with what? That were Will someone us. tell us what happened with Bob? Yeah, we have no, we didn't see it, so you guys can sell it. Well, Bob Dylan so is doing his thing, right. stoned out of his tree. Uh -huh. I mean, those eyes, nobody's yeah. home. Like he was in a, from a crib. Well, honey, he's bombed, and this guy comes out with, he wasn't nude, at least he did in the street. He took his shirt off, and he has written across him, uh, soy, soy bomb. bomb. Oh. And then, <laughs> And he's doing all these gyrations and just, and Bob is singing and this guy's dancing up a storm uh, with a very active pelvic bone and the rug was Actually, he had some good muscular control. <laughs> but seriously, very good. If, if you want to go in for weightlifting or whatever. Um, and, and Bob is singing and this guy is doing this thing and nobody's doing anything about it. It's very distracting for both of them. They should have been both taken off the stage and let the, the cuties come on. It would have been funny yeah. if the guards took Bob Dylan off stage. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I don't think he could walk. Yeah. I mean, he was so bombed out of his gourd. And, and then they gave him an album of the year as well. Wow. You said briefly he, he was in the studio here? You worked with Bob? For a minute and a half. Oh, shortly, okay. Very short minute and a half. Long Not time. even one lesson. Yes, it didn't seem like it. Did he bail or did you kick him out? I kicked him out. Because he was drunk? That yeah. among other things, and he was an arrogant asshole. That's enough to do it. Uh -huh. I mean, why bother with people like that? When a mind is so filled with drugs and self, it's like you fill a cup to the top, it's full. You can't put anything more in it. And when the head is so filled, with ego. I mean, if conceit were consumption, he would have been pushing up daisies then. Arrogance. Like he was bestowing his presence upon me. Go. Be gone. No. He wouldn't have taken Oh, hell no. It's like a sieve. Brains like a sieve. Anyway, we won't <laughs> talk about that. that. He was one, and then there was another one. Only one other who offered me a joint in the studio. Oh, yeah. Paul Kantner. <laughs> that did it. Out. <laughs> oh, and I did. I, I could did. see your face. What? I would have loved to have seen your face. No, you wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't either. Johnny Mathis was another one. Then. Yeah, well, there was a problem with John because he, he was he was very difficult. I wanted to, to take him because of Anne, who owned the Blackhawk. And uh, I had all the great, great accident and done so much for him. He eventually turned on her, too. This is not, this is not helpful. This is, has nothing to do with you kids. So at any rate, the Bammies, well, I, I don't think they should even have them on. There's nothing there that is productive. It, all it does is denigrate the business and make anyone who is in show business automatically assume they're either whores, pimps, or uh, drug abusers. That's, uh, you know, plus the fact, the worst thing. I mean, I can stand the whores and the pimps yeah. and the drug pushers, but singing out of tune. <laughs> Bed from another, she gets paid for it. 
there's at least some respect for herself. <laughs> Whereas other people I know just sing dead out of tune. Now that's just Pardon me? Singing out of tune is intolerable. Well, that, that's, I'm sorry, that's unforgivable. <laughs> <laughs> the other things I can pass by, you know. But out of tune, no. No. So, now are we done with that? Yes. Good. Yeah. <laughs> so, at any rate, it was really, if you want to see it, Well, bring it in and, and loan it out. You can have mine and pass it around. The Grammys. Grammys. Yeah, the Grammys. It really was. It's an insult to anyone in the profession. Well, because it makes it the general public assumes that anyone in this business is of that caliber, and I don't think anyone in here wants to look like those people, behave like them, be a party to that. It certainly is not conducive to good. In fact, uh, two stations, Channel 5 now and Channel 9, Channel 5 and 7 at night, have the news, you know, the news. Now we have sex advice to married couples on the news. What the hell does that have to do with the news? <laughs> But is that, do they, I guess they need to boost, boost their ratings. Yeah, 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 right. So a little sex dropped in there. Maybe people will watch it and get a few pointers on how to do it better. How good can it get? Very good. Onward. <laughs> here, here. Well, she is naughty. But um, not the Princess Papuli, who just loves to give it away. You know that song? Uh -huh. The Princess Papuri has plenty of papaya. We're talking about papaya. Mm -hmm. She just loves to give it away. I like that too. Too blonde, too blonde. My uncle used to always say that too. Really? It's a great dude. Cute song, really. Cute song. And that's like, it's better than taking in washing. I know a girl who's kept up in a flat. It's better than taking in washing. Each night a different half on her half rack. It's better than taking and washing. Now she may do things not regarded as she may now she may do things not regarded as nice. Da 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 da. Virtue is fine. If you don't get your price, it's better than taking and washing. <laughs> anyway, I blew that line. Um, it's it's cute song too. It's pertaining to the same thing. At least there's some bit of subtlety to it, and if you understand it, you have no reason to be critical. Where did you learn it? Now, on E to E is the really big one, right? If E to E is right, and you're thinking, I've got to keep, I must keep this vibration, this straight line of air, but I'm going to increase that air as I open to the air to keep that placement, then you're home free because you do understand, ah, air is the really sticky widget because we are not aware, as I'm sure you are now, of how many airs we use. It's the most used vowel of all, isn't it? You, you discovered that in analyzing your songs, did you not? Yes. Mm -hmm. You have yes. air, mm -hmm. uh, o, uh, Ah, forms thereof. So it is very much used, and it's a vowel we've never heard of, we don't know where it is, but we neglect, neglect. Do you see? We use it, and we're not aware of it. Besides, it's spelled in a dozen different ways. W-H-E-R-E, W-E-R-E, W-E-A-R, W-A-R-E, you see? So who knows what it is? It, but to us it's a sound, a very valid sound, that air. And coming to, to grips with air is very difficult. And this is why every time you do, you better think through it well. Don't just do it. Quote. Yeah. Okay? So you have E to N. And you're going to think. Keep the vibration, right? Keep the air full bore. 
had that pressure behind it. Oh, there's air. That should come as a surprise, like a shock. Because you're thinking, keep the feeling of the E. Not the E, but the feeling of it. And open the jaw. There's air. Now what are you going to think? Keep the feeling of the air, and that air is still directed in the same place. And open to open your jaw. What happens when you open your jaw? Hmm? The tongue goes with it, and what do you get? Ah. Uh, uh. Ah. Now, what else are you going to remember about E? Smile. Oh. And you're going to smile all the way through E, E, and R, uh, aren't you? Once at ah, what do you think? Lips. Just your lips. Oh, yes, just the lips. But what are you thinking? Thinking ah. Thinking ah. I'm holding ah. I am never going to sing anything but ah. I am the only person in the world who can hold ah and jut my lips and still have ah. If you think ah, you're doomed because the back of the tongue is going to curl and you're going to drop your place. And you wind up with, ah, oh, right into the gullet. Are you taking Junior for a walk? Yeah, I wasn't thinking about it. You weren't? Yeah. Well, think about it. Look it. Like I'm sure he doesn't want to, but you should. What are you doing? Did I? Oh, well, I'll pay for it tomorrow. Oh, bless. Now you see, good yeah. guy. Huh? Sweet. I told you so, I told you so. Now, 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 now. So, you're going to think, I am holding ah, and be startled when you discover ah happens. You're going to remember, in working on the slow tape, jut the lips slowly. Right? Don't make an abrupt change. Because every time you move your lips, your tongue thinks it ought to get to move. That was the problem with it. And that's why you had to think, ah, with all your mind. And jutting your lips. Now you're at awe. What are you going to think now? You're going to hold the feeling of awe. That same feeling directed at the gums. Ah, not ah, oh. Do you see? And you're going to close the jaw. Which part of the jaw do you close? The back. The back of the jaw. Now write that down. If it's very cold out, he might want his sweat. It's not that cold. Okay. You'd rather not go out in this way. Well, he does have a ski sweater. <laughs> He has boots, too, but he won't wear them. <laughs> well, one tries, you know. It's very difficult. If you take him out and he doesn't have his raincoat on, he has a yellow slicker raincoat with a hood, and he doesn't have it on, then you have to blow dry him, and you just hyperventilate. <laughs> it takes forever. <laughs> I don't You're remember. I wasn't you know, listening. What I, I just said it. I wasn't listening to what I said. I was, I was glued on it. What did writing, I say? I was so writing slowly faster, slowly slower than you were speaking. Don't I'm sure. The jaw. Slowly yeah. close the lips to the awe. Is that what I you, got that. You got that. And then you said you think you were approaching the E. Yes. Now you're going to think what? That's, that's right. What are you going to think? Oh, I'm holding the feeling of the awe. I'm not going to change my lips. I'm going to close my jaw, taking the tongue with the jaw. Now, what part of the jaw do you close? The back. The back. And you must always keep that in mind. When you go from an open vowel to a closed vowel, you close the back of the jaw, you bite. When you go from a closed vowel to an open one, air eh, to ah ah or e to ah eh, to air eh, or e to ah, eh, your, uh, you're opening the front of the jaw, right? 
Okay, so you're going to close the back of the jaw, returning the tongue all the way back up to what? The E position. Yes? Yes. And you're not going to change the lips. The lips remain jutted, not pursed, jutted. They're forward. Ah. Now, what do I want to see all the way through this exercise? Teeth. Teeth. Ah, thank you. What teeth? The lower teeth. The top of the lower teeth. Because our tendency is to do ah and pull the lips in. And then when we start to go from R to O, we want to make the O with our lips. Watch, children. We tend to do this. Oh. Leave your lips hang open like a giant blowfish. They're jutted forward. You should see your bottom teeth, at the, the tops of them, not the gums, but the tops of oh. As you close, do you see? And also the top teeth. You should see the bottom teeth all the way through. It is very important to get that lip under control because it does want to come up. And particularly when we're trying to protect a sound, and we do try to protect sounds. You know that. So you're going to leave the feel like you're going to leave your lips wide open, which you cannot do. They're attached in such a way when you close the jaw, they close. Do you see? They go with the jaw. And they're in the same, they just shrivel up. Look. You hear what? Horses can leave their lips open and close their jaw. You know that. Look. We can't as humans. We're attached in such a way that if you close the jaw, the lips are going to come with the jaw. But the singer must be aware Never do those lips come in and close off like a mute. Right? Now you're never going to stand in front of an audience and sing an U. You're never going to sing an U unless you're singing a French song or a German song or a Swedish song. Right? You're going to sing U, but you're not going to sing U, which is the typical thing for Americans to do. You understand that? Okay? So you're going to be consciously aware all the way through that your upper teeth and your lower teeth are displayed. So you don't have a tendency to close in. Right? Now, going from O to U, if you remember, was more difficult really, physiologically, than E to N. Because you've got, you're all the way open, and now you're saying close. We must remember, we close the back of the jaw. I want you right now, all of you, on this note, sing yeah, for me. Just sit up straight and do it. Good buzz now. Go. Now smile. Michael, right now, this good job here. Get a mirror. Now you leave those lips out there. I want to see the inside of your lips. You are all wonderful. And this, this is why we're reviewing this, because that's what happens. Okay, show me all to who, Michael. Uh, why? Why don't I see your teeth? Oh, I see them. Uh, no, you. Uh, uh, I don't see them. And you start to close. Oh, you see, I'm doing this. 
Oh. Don't look at me. You look in the mirror. Michael, why do you hold the mirror up and look at me? Are you looking in the mirror? Go. Oh. Do you see your teeth? Do you see your teeth when you closed your jaw? See the top, top and bottom. No, you don't. You got your lips covering. Go cool, again. Yeah. Bigger. Yeah, uh, now what does it play out here? Oh, show me those. Two. Wait, hold on. Okay. Uh, 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 look in the mirror. Now I want to continue to see those teeth. Look in the mirror. Close the jaw. I still want enough room for a small, not large, Havana a Cuban cigar. Okay? I want you to look like a blowfish. Do it again. Uh, Way up. Look in the mirror, Michael, or I'll break your jaw. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very good rebuttal, a little one. Go again and look in the mirror. Uh, now you see, you just you're singing. Oh, uh, I want you to pretend you're holding ah uh, and jut your jaw and jut your lips. Do you see what I'm talking about? Oh, that's why you're here writing this down. Do you understand? Yes. Now, I want to see those lips come forward like like an orangutan. Way out there, on the inside of your lips and your teeth. I even want to see your gums. <laughs> well, I might see the teeth if he attempts to show me his gums. Well, you'll see what I ate last night. I've seen that. <laughs> Look. Uh, now, wait forward, Mike. No, 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 no. You're singing the ah oh. I want you to think I'm going to hold ah. I am never going to please this woman. So I'm going to hold ah and show her that I can do that and jut my lips. Now I'm going to come over and use your face for a moment. Okay. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> you look in the mirror. Ah. remember because then you start to sing. You're never going to stand in front of an audience and do mm, I love you. But you're also never going to sing I love you. I love you. They're still soft and kissable, not tight. Mm. And you, they get that way from working both these muscles and the lip muscles. Do you see? And this is imperative. And it is imperative that you write down everything that we discussed about this exercise. Now, if that ooh is right, I, all you have to do is think, I'm going to hold E, I'm going to hold ooh, and smile. 
and it turns smile. See, I am not with normal people. I am my Oh boy, Michael, he did that. You know, as a matter of fact, he made something when she came into my eyes. It's my own. And she I'm glad it. Oh, you're glad it's my gun. Why do I want to do that? She is here. She is here. She is here. Well, I did it right, Dan. <laughs> I couldn't resist. I'm sorry. That was, she's quick. Well, let me tell you. She learns from Gladys me. Gladys is a hell of a singer, too. I'm sorry. I couldn't resist. So is Hazel. Yes, it is. Yeah, yeah go right. Why do you want to confuse me at my age? <laughs> I'm confused enough. I'm doing stuff for my tax accountant and attorney. Oh, good. You may be visiting me and you know where. <laughs> you mean AGLL or? G no. What is that prison outside of Seattle? Okay. The one that rhymes with him. All right. No, jail. I, I lined up with that woman from, who was it they put in jail, the hotel woman? Oh, Leon. Oh, Leon. 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 oh wouldn't we be a pair? <laughs> <laughs> that would be that really would be wild. wild. Yeah, go ahead. We would give her We'd a have a hell of a good time. <laughs> yeah. And then they would soon release us both. <laughs> to see that mm, in that way. But this is the only way you're going to to gain control of those muscles. So when you do sing, I love you, is that I love you, and drop the jaw, and close the lips, do you see? So this is, this is, this works. Because when you are singing, you're not thinking about this. By this time, those muscles are in, intact and they're working. And they're working for you without you thinking about it. Yes? Yes. Okay. How are the R's and L's? Yes, darling. I just wanted to hear something. The tongue should always be flat on... Um, Pardon me? The tongue should always be flat. It's going from E to N. Uh, flat? Well, um, on your lower teeth. It should be against the lower... Oh, you mean should lay on top of those bottom uh, molars, exactly. yes. Pardon me? Yes. Yes, right. because they're in this, the tongue remains in the same position all the way through okay. as on the E. And this is what's so difficult because when we get started going down, the tongue wants to pull in. That's clear. And it's, it, it should feel like, I think you came in a, a little late, and I told them it should feel like a piece of uncooked liver looks. That sloppy, dead thing. There, the tongue has absolutely no function on a vowel. It only functions for a consonant. Darling, I'm trying to talk to her, and you're right in her face. Not, she has a pretty face, too. You all do. <laughs> Lovely skin, I hate you all. No wrinkles. Well, I fought for every one of these wrinkles, and I'm keeping them. That's my excuse for not getting a facelift. Besides, well, I won't say what I was going to say. Anyway. I'll say it. Hmm? I'll say it. I would have a very deep hole right in my chin. If they pulled off all that skin. <laughs> There's so much of it that's loose there. I mean, really. You have no idea what's underneath all this gear. <laughs> now, do you understand what your thoughts are on E L R O U now? This is very, very important. Do you have it all written down? Yes. Mm -hmm. E, little goldfish. Yes. Maurice Chevalier, lower lip. We need to breathe into this baby. Yes. Very soft, tight here, soft here. Do you see? We're giving so many. Wait, stop saying. Is it tight, tight here, soft here, here? Soft here. And I started to say, we're giving so many contrary 
order. It's so like, I want this to be tight. I want this to be soft and mushy. Do you, you see? We say, I want, I want this to be tight, but the tongue to be relaxed. I want this to be tight, but the lips to be soft and mushy. Those are contrary directions, contrary orders you're giving your body. And they are orders that the body must comply with for you to sing and sing well. And they have to be trained to do that automatically. Do you understand? And they will be, I promise you, you're probably noticing by now that in your singing, if you're doing any performing, that things are happening automatically. Some things are beginning to happen automatically. Are you noticing that? That without your thinking about them. And what we, have, what we must do is, uh, this is the next part of what we deal with, we must get to the point where we infect our speech with what we have learned in singing so that we correct the way we speak. And this becomes apparent when we start working, which is not too long from now, on subplots where you're standing up here and delivering lyrics, speaking them. Like why try to change me now and give me the simple life? And people start saying, um, what was the one? Oh, well, there's many of them. Uh, and why try to change me now? People did a session of that this afternoon's class. Um, I sit and daydream. I sit and. Mm -hmm. I sit and daydream. That does not seem well. Besides, people will deliver. I sit and daydream. I got daydreams galore. Uh, what put the other one looks modest? Why can't I be more conventional? People stop me, stare, so I try. So why try? So why try? It isn't so why try. So why? So I try. You see? So I try. That has to be a thought in your head. So I try, not so why try, um, but that's not for me, but that's not for me, for, for, her. for her. Everyone got up here at some point and said, because I can't, so let people wonder, let them not ring out. Don't you remember, oh, don't, don't you, because <laughs> night. <laughs> I was, oh, why try to change me? Why try to change me now? Me now. Me now. Me now. <laughs> what does the word now mean to you? You said, why try to change me now? What would now mean? After all this time, wouldn't it? But what does me now mean? I'm sentimental. I'm sentimental. So I walk. So I, so I walk. Do you see? We must correct our speech, and, and particularly today. I have a, a much more difficult time with this, with young people today, because everyone is so uptight and so in a hurry that they speak very badly, and all of that infects their singing. You, and they speak very quickly. Very quickly. Like, it's almost diarrhea of the mouth. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, true, because, and there again is a lack of self-respect, because if you're going to say something, I trust that you think what you're going to say is important. You're not just, wow. <laughs> they speak so quickly, and what we don't realize is, that we may know what we're going to say, but the listener or the audience does not. So you have to give the audience time to assimilate what you're saying. That's why when I make a very important point, I slow down to the next speed and stop dead, so that you hear and can assimilate what I'm telling you, as opposed to sitting here and assimilate what I'm telling you. 
I really want you to pay attention. I really like it. No, no. That does not make it. But we're all, we all feel so pressed. That's why we have road rage. We have people driving 90 miles an hour. Like, it's, you know, the sun's out. And they're cutting in and doing all kinds of dreadful things because they're so frustrated and so angry. And so spread a little joy. Speak slowly, lovingly, and kindly. And give them a chance to know that you're speaking slowly, lovingly, and kindly. Even if you're giving them help. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, that reminded me, they were interviewing Michael Landon. And he was talking about his, uh, when he would audition for a part, that he would slow down. all his auditions, because he would slow it down, make it very clear for the person auditioning him to hear what he had to say, and then he would use the effect of wait a minute, remind me of that, he said. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. That was his That to hold them, because they want to hear them, what he says. Mm -hmm. Very clever. It's mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, people will listen. They can't hear you if you shout. I can't hear what you say, what you are. It speaks louder. Mm -hmm. Right? And this frenzy of speech, and we all fall heir to it if we're not careful. So uh, this is another area that we will be dealing with. So when you, when you deliver a lyric, you deliver it about the same tempo which you would be singing it. And you don't do it. I'm sentimental, so I won't move it. <laughs> I've got some habits even I can't. I start as a corner, but they don't even do it. I'm sentimental, so I walk in the rain. I've got some habits. Even I can't explain it. I start by the corner. I'm going to turn up his face. Why do I to change it now? As, a, as though they've rehearsed it for four days and now they're saying it for this person. You see, this is the spur of the moment dialogue. We'll get into that before long, but you kids were at the um, subplot thing, and we're going to be using it, and I mean using it. Now, is this clear as far as E.A.O.U. is concerned? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Now let's talk about E. Yes, dear. One more thing. Actually, the top teeth are always showing? The bottom of them are always showing, hmm. and the, the top of your bottom teeth, okay. if you pull them in, in any way, then they act as a mute. So they must be, you must be free with your, with your lips, so that the lips do not create a blockade for sound. Okay? Mm -hmm. Does that answer the question? Yeah. Yes. Um, each, the most important two exercises of the whole shebang are he down and he air are our roof. Those two are what we built E triad open to air and project on. The only new thing that you learned in the third exercise is how to approach going to a higher note. I didn't say a high note. I said to a higher note. You don't think I'm going up to it, you think I'm going out. Even if it's sky high, that's still your attitude. But we have different placements for that, which we're going to be getting into very shortly. Isn't that nice? In a couple of weeks, we're going to the fast tape and your first high exercise. Is on the fast tape? Mm -hmm. Yes. And you will be shocked at how good you are and how much you've learned, how far you've come. So all the exercises be on that? Pardon me? Will all of the exercises be on that, or will we start again? Uh, all, all of them will be on. Um, no, no. You, ha you have a slow tape mm -hmm. already. Yeah. This will be a separate tape, mm -hmm. the fast tape. Mm -hmm. And you'll be using the slow tape on the low exercises twice a week. And then I will put the high exercises as we take them on to the low, so that you, on the days that you do the low eases, 
you still can do the highs. Do you understand? Well, I, you, you see, we're going to have fast eases. All of them on both pegs. All of the exercises are going to be on both pegs. Yes. When you give us the fast exercises, will we again be doing a build-up, or will we get all of the exercises at once? No, you'll be doing a build-up. We have, first we have, excluding the very first little exercise that you're going to be doing, which you could do right now, and it's kind of fun and a little surprising. You could handle it. Maybe I'll let you do it. Maybe I'll let you do it, just for fun. Uh, there are three serious business fundamental high exercises. They will take you almost as long to secure as all of the lows. Not quite. And you'll be learning all kinds of other things while you're dealing with those. But there's, you're to build the structure, the, the top. Okay? They will take you a while. Then when those are achieved, there are, th we move them up. We make them higher. And we also have three, what are called the stress easers, which are extremely difficult and take time. And then we move everything up. So, the, do you, you ladies, you want to do something fun? Yeah. yeah. Okay, stand up. Then we'll talk about E triad, open to F, and project. But that's built on what we already have, isn't it? <laughs> Except for the thought of out and back. Okay. All we're going to do is a really simple thing. Um, say Lee. Lee. Say Lou. Lou. What's the difference between an E and an U? Just, just a lift. So you can say U, 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 U. Now put an L in front of the E and an L in front of the U. Lee, Lou, Lee, Lou, Lee, Lou. Now here's the two. Here's the two. Lee, Lou, Lee, Lou, Lee. See, when you say leave, that's good. But this is what I'm getting at. I think what I'm, I was doing is keeping the tongue between both the lower and the upper teeth. No, um, don't worry about it. 
So I'm just like supposed to be kicking it up against the top to me? No, you're not supposed to do anything. You're just supposed to sing an L and it's going to go right where it should go. <laughs> okay. Okay? Lee, that's all you have to do. Just have fun. <coughs> Lee, Lou, Lee, Lou, Lee, Lou, Lee, Lou, Lee, Lou. <laughs> Leave it alone. I just gave you a little 
fun to do to just I show you. good. <laughs> anyway. He juts real well. <laughs> yeah, he does. <laughs> juts is That's not. Is that the highest note that we hit again? An F above C above middle C. Thank you. Okay, that's the note that's on the uh, uh, top line of the treble clef. So, you see, you, you are making strides. And I thought that would be fun, kind of fun for you to do. You could do that. Wasn't that fun? Yeah. Did you like that? Yeah. 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 Gives you a little more confidence. Now, let's talk about E triad open to add and project. When you took the E triad, the immediate reaction was you gave me another E. When we got the E down, oh, I was getting some goodies and that goodies. And then when we went to E, A, R, R, U, you decided to give me a whole different E because you were anticipating the air. So instead of he, I got he, you were choking before we even started, you see? Instead of that, same E, because you were scared of the air, you were anticipating the air, and we had to fix that E. And I was yelling, no, no, I want a real E. Brace that tongue, brace that tongue. <coughs> then when we came to E triad, I said, I think we're going to take this E on a triad. And your attitude was that, oh, with that. Oh, yes, oh, yes. I'm going up. Oh, my God. <laughs> yes. And so I get a whole different E. Do, do you understand? Where you were screaming, this was too high. You weren't screaming, this was too high. You were screaming, the whole thing was too high right from the get-go. And you learned you're going to slide, you're going to think I'm going out to that E. Now write down everything you know about the E triad, open to air, and project. Number one, you want that good, firm E, that same old buzz, the one that you have on E down, right? And then you're going to do what? You're going to slide out. out like a trombone and back to the middle note, right? Then what are you going to think on that middle note? The feeling of I've e. got to keep the feeling of the sound of E and open to the F, keeping the placement of the E into the air. 
right, yes, and again that thought of I'm going to increase the pressure as I open, even though you can't and you will be reducing the pressure because it's a lower note. But your thought is, this is still going out there. In other words, your thought is, the ear takes care of the pitch. I've done a triad for weeks now. Remember how long it took us? But I'm going to really establish that middle note <coughs> with a very firm E placement, right? And I'm going to stay right there. I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to sit right on this note and open my jaw, take the tongue with my jaw, and let my ear take me to the note, right? And I'm going to come on top of the note. Yes? Opening as you slide to the end, right? Are we okay? Clear? Okay. Then what do you think? I've got to keep the feeling of the E into the air, right? Mm -hmm. Now what are you going to do? No, we're doing E triad open to air and project. So, and what are you going to do on that projection? Increase the air, you're still going out, and you're sliding out and back, aren't you? Hmm? Do you have to worry about the pitch? Your ear takes care of that. What do you have to concern yourself with? Keep the feeling of the E as you push out and back, right? Keep the feeling, pardon me, keep the feeling of the air now as you go out and back. You keep the feeling of the E on the triad back to that middle note. Then you keep that buzz of that E opening of the, the feeling of the E opening to E. Now you're going to keep that feeling of air and project it out and back. Right? And that is a, a difficult exercise because people worry about finishing it. And you must not worry about finishing it. You must say, I'm going to use all the air I need to go as far as I go. And that applies to every exercise you ever learn. Your concern is not with, can I finish it? Your concern is with keeping The placement, the tongue, the jaw, all of those quantities that we're dealing with, as they should be for as far as you go. Yes? Never concerned with, I've got to finish the exercise. Are any of you having trouble finishing E triad open to air and project? Not anymore. Not since we've been working on the song. And of course, you're, you're in the harm, in the harm, and all that good stuff, which works retroactively, doesn't it? All of the things that you've learned about the nasal consonants has helped what went before. But all of the things you've learned have been dependent on what you learned before. This exercise goes like a bat out of nowhere. You try out open air, and if you haven't slid that, you haven't worked with it well, you're not going to be able to do what I want you to do. But you're going to be able to do what I want you to do easily. I've tried. This is where this is going to go in a couple of weeks. Stand up. Yeah. <coughs> All you guys can do with it. What you're going to do is take the E. Out, back, open, and out.
I would for you. Go. you weren't happy to begin with, and now we're doing things that are going to be uh, a new experience for you, and you're going to be, again, a little fearful and apprehensive, and therefore not all that happy, okay? But if you do exactly what you've been told, what you have done, if you hadn't done what you've been taught, you would not be able to do what you did tonight. Do, do you understand? Everything you have done has brought you to the point where you men went to a C above C above middle C, which is what male singers call high C. They call that high C. High C actually is there. And this is just C above middle C. Do you see? But men call that a high C. It, for the male range, it is. And that's, that's the note that Pavarotti just loves. And so does Placido. I mean, they. They screw up everything 
until they come to that high C, and then they take that breath. Well, of course, with, with, with Paparazzi, his eyes, he looks like Willie Nelson had fish eyes. They glimmer a little bit, but Paparazzi's eyes glisten. He needs that high C. Now, whatever. It's it, and it's a piece of paper. No big And it's Now it won't be too long before you can have local washes. Mm -hmm. I thought it that cleaned a little bit. Uh, <coughs> Which one? The uh, redo. Oh yeah, that. Yeah. But that the vocal, if there's really a, it will it jars it loose. Yes, it blasted it off. <laughs> <You> <laughs> <did>. <laughs> Was that fun? Yeah, yeah that was. Yeah. Is that fun? And and you couldn't have come within a country mile of that. When you started, you've worked so hard, and you've done so well, and I'm so proud of you, because I didn't do it. You did it. You did it. I could teach from now until hell freezes over. It doesn't mean a thing, but you would have to do it. So you're to be complimented, and I applaud you. <laughs> you've worked hard, obviously, or you wouldn't be able to do what you just did. I thought you deserved a little glimpse into what's up and coming and a little shot at look what you learned. Now, now the job is remaining truthful and consistent with what you've learned. When you do your assignment, we're going to soon be going into, I want one more lesson on uh, I, I, all of the work songs with the R's and the L's on, on the Blue moon, don't blame me, embrace blue, you moonlight in Vermont. I only have eyes for you, and I will be grateful. All of the R's and all of the L's in all six of those songs. Do you see? I want that, and I'm going to hear those next week, because we can do that. Then, the week after that, you're going to bring a brand new tape, one you will never abuse. And we're going to do the fast fixes. And you're going to love it because do you know how long it'll take you? To be telling you? Seven minutes. Between seven and ten minutes at the max. Mm. And it'll be a wider range as far as low notes are concerned. We'll retake the fast low pieces and you will, and the Lilu, and you will love it. You will! <laughs> <laughs> and then after a uh, small word, will be starting the high exercises. And they will take time. But in between, before we start, we'll get up to Lilu, then I'm going to have you working on simple life and white how to actually singing. Oh, that would be nice. And learning things like how to tag a song and, and the phrasing and all that good stuff. It's, I mean, singing songs. Singing. Yeah. 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 And, um, Real song. Besides, don't blame me. I'm braggable you. All that. Now, it becomes more pleasurable, even though the exercises, as Michael will tell you, are a little, a little heavier to do. And they will take a little time to solidify. When you do them, do you still use an air? I would. And I'll, t I'll tell you why. Because we become sort of secure, and, 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 and as we see tonight, why we did all this business about concept on um, just the first three reasons, those are the things that I will want you, on the days that you do the slow tape, to read each one of those before you do your heat out. To read what you've written before you do he er a or u. To read what you've written before you do E triad open to air and project on the days that you do the slow tape. For a while, you'll do the slow tape twice a week, like on Monday and Thursday, or Sunday and Friday, whatever, whatever your choice is. I like a couple of days in between. Do you, do you see, like Monday and Thursday would be good, 
Sunday and Wednesday would be good, um, Tuesday and Friday, so there's time in between times. Um, so that on the days that you do the slow take, you read those. Now the time will come when I will release you to the point where you do that once a week, religiously, and then you read it so that it's constantly fresh because what we are about now is getting to the point where we begin to use what we've learned in singing with our speech, making those corrections. I have more furs today than you could possibly imagine. I'm sitting on also I walk and bring. I start for the corner. I start for the corner. I start for the, for, for the corner. And the turn, turn up. And, and Anne could turn up. Anne could turn up. <laughs> In Spain. Why do I change me now? You see, we must learn to speak clearly and distinctly. Otherwise, we continue to infiltrate that into our singing. And that's when I become a real terror, right, Michael? Mm -hmm. Make fun of me. He has cracks in the <laughs> Bring out the cat of nine tails. You mean you haven't done that? Oh, what? I've been a dream. I've been an absolute <laughs> doll up to this point. Really, <laughs> see. <laughs> you think you've heard you ain't heard nothing yet. Bring them out. <laughs> out! Be gone! <laughs> Get out of my face! <laughs> well, because from now on you have to be committed. And you may well be <laughs> to an institution. <laughs> because you cannot now, once we start the high exercises, you're, you're in my grasp. Because you don't dare screw it. You don't dare skip a day of work because the muscle won't take it. You will not take it. You you don't do you'll find that out. Because you will cheat. Everyone does. But not once you've done it. Yes? There is one exception. You said if you go on a vacation, take a real vacation in the true sense of the word, leave all this behind. Yeah. Right. Leave it behind. Don't expect to come back and find it where it was when you left. It will take some time rebuilding, and I will explain how to do that, how to go about it. But when you do take a vacation, take a vacation. <coughs> if you're driving, you leave the city limits, leave it behind you, and look to the new city limits. Take a real vacation. Heck, but you're not, I'm not going to tell you that now. You take your vacation now, you take these tapes with you, and by God, you do your exercises. You can throw you out in a hotel, go to the men's room at the Shell Station. Ladies' <laughs> 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 room. Judy, I did uh, breathing exercises because I have a little timer. Oh, I gotta do it now, and I stop where I'm, where, wherever I'm at, got out of the car, and I'm, I pulled into a parking lot, and I just started doing the exercises. And uh, the person came up to me and said, Okay. Do, you, do you want me to call an ambulance? <laughs> no. No. And, uh, another, and another time, a neighbor, when I was, when I was singing, said, is everything okay? Called up, is everything okay over there? No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Last year when I went to Colorado, we, stayed, we rented this condo, and we stayed in the house with like 15 people, and I had to do my exercise, you know? And so I'd go out in the car, really, really, really <laughs> Close the door, roll up the windows, and, they hope still they looking, and hope that they couldn't hear me because they're kind of loud. Yeah, they are. <laughs> they they are. are. Wait, what are you doing oh, geez, out there with there. your house? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just hope they didn't look out the window. One of the girls went to Canada, <laughs> and she, she, she and her husband enjoy, you know, going to out into the woods. So, but he doesn't like the local woods. So she took it, she took plenty of batteries, to protect that, and they're in the wilds. And she's way away from their encampment doing her vocal easements. And she turned around and here's this bear, this grizzly, standing there looking at her. <laughs> and she thought, no, they told her, don't move. 
looked him right back in the eye, which she did, and the heart's going 60 miles an hour. She thought she was going to have a heart attack. And they just stood there and looked at each other for about three minutes, and then he turned and walked away. I guess he thought anything that sounds like that, you better not eat. <laughs>